going to go over using the knife tool in this video. We'll start with some basics and then we'll move into some more complicated things it can do. And then we'll also do a little practical modeling with it so we can see how it combos up with other tools in Blender and add-ons like machine tools and whatnot. So let's just get started by grabbing the mesh, hitting the tab key, going into edit mode. Press A twice to get rid of the selection. And so you can get to the knife tool by pressing K. Once you have it activated, you can left click to start making cuts. So you can cut edge to edge like so if you wanted to. And if you keep going, you'll see if we have an extra line coming out here. We could keep cutting or we can right click to end the cut, but we're not finished here. If you want to confirm what you've done, you hit space bar or enter, right? And that will go ahead and do that like so. Now you can also alternatively press K, left click, and then left click again. You can double click and that'll end a cut as well. The problem with this is sometimes it'll create a double edge or a double line here. And so it's more apparent sometimes when you go across the mesh and you try to double click, it might do something like this. So you got to be careful of that one. And I don't recommend doing that. Now, if you press escape, you can actually get out of the knife tool and it won't confirm any of your cuts, right? So let's just keep playing with this for a second. I'll press K, do some left clicks and then the right click, left click and right click. So you can cut, of course, like that. You can cut in free space as well. You don't have to necessarily do edge to edge, but if you want, you can click hold and drag and you'll cut across edges like so. Okay. Now, something else you can do is you can hold shift and that will snap to midpoints. So you can see we'll start on a midpoint and go to a midpoint. And you can do this while clicking and dragging. So if you click and start dragging, holding click down, right, left click, and then hold shift, it'll snap to midpoints through all your cuts. Okay. So you can see how that works out there. We hit space bar here. And I'll go ahead and confirm that if we want to do that. Another side note is when you start uh, cutting and you click around like so, you can hit control Z and back it up if you wanted to. Okay. So when you hit K and you look down at the bottom, there's a couple things going on down here. There's different shortcuts you can use. We're going to go through these one by one. We'll start over here on the right. First thing to point out is when you make a cut and you go ahead and you start orbiting, you'll see we can see through the mesh here. That's the uh, X right here. So if you press V, that'll turn that off. Next up, we're going to have distance measurements and angle measurements. So when you're doing cuts, if you press, um, you go ahead and press S here, it'll be the distance of the edge, and it'll also be the angle, right? Press S again, it'll just be distance. S again, just angle now. All right, and so hit K again, turn it back on. And so um, the XYZ orientation lock, I'll go over in a little bit more detail here in a second. Middle mouse button obviously is orbiting, panning is what they say, but that's orbiting. So C is cut through. So if you press C and you start making some cuts, it'll cut all the way through the mesh like so. All right, this can be quite useful when you're in a side orthographic view. So while you're orbiting, you can hold Alt, jump into any orthographic view, front, left, right, top, bottom, whatever. Um, you can cut this way as well. If you hit C, it'll cut through the mesh. You can do little cuts like that, right? All the way through. All right. The angle constraint's pretty good. There's two different types. There's a screen angle constraint. You press A. Okay, it's going to give you an angle constraint of 30 degrees by default. Uh, but if you hit A twice, you'll get a relative angle constraint. That's going to line up to the edge down there at the that turned yellow, basically. And so if you press S a few times, we can see the degrees we're cutting. It's just going to cut at 90 degrees or 120 or um, 30 or whatever the case, 60. So increments of 30. Now, you can't go across edges or that angle constraint stops working. Okay, so just keep that in mind. You have to go up to the edge, and that's as far as you can go. You'll have to continue from there if you want to keep cutting. We'll get back to that. We'll actually set this up so you can change the um, the angle amount there from 30 to 5 degrees, but we'll get into that a little bit later. All right, so control will ignore snaps, and that's pretty much the midpoint snapping that you're going to enable or disable, uh, which could be useful. Holding shift, of course, will turn uh, mid-snap on and off as well. So right mouse button obviously is a new cut, double left mouse button is uh, how you finish off the edge, right? And then I already talked about that. Left mouse button, obviously, we've been using quite a bit. And Control-Z we talked about as well. So, and then entering escape.
So that's pretty much all the options there are when you press the K key, except for um, we didn't go over orientation lock. So let's go ahead and do that. This is pretty simple and easy to understand. When you press K, start making a knife cut, you can hit X, Y, or Z. And by default, these are going to use the global transform. Okay, so that's this little gizmo up here at the top. And also, you can see we're set to global here. Okay, so it's going to use that. But you can also use this with two others. It's going to be local, and you can use a custom one, which is a plus sign. We'll talk about those real quick. So when you have an object, press Shift D. I'm going to duplicate this one. If I rotate this, you'll see here it gets local rotational values here. Okay. And so when we're in edit mode, we were to switch global to local. Now, when we press the K key and then we do X, Y, or Z, you'll see we can actually line up like such on this now locally. Okay. So that's kind of a good one to know. I'm going to limit dissolve everything real quick. Do a bevel on this edge, just chamfer like so. Whenever you have something selected, a vertex, or a face or an edge for that matter, uh, you can adopt its normal orientation basically. So if you come over here, you just drop down, you'll see there's face or, uh, face normals and vertex normals. And the edge normals are a combination of the two edges as well. So it's like the medium point between the two. So the normal would shoot out from that edge. Uh, but when we select something, we can come up here, click the plus sign. That'll give us a custom orientation here. So if we have the move tool active, you'll see it actually lines up to that. And it'll always stay in line with whatever you chose originally. And so the knife tool does work this way as well. So if we were to go ahead and get out of these real quick, you'll notice that when I hit K and I hit X, we're going to have the same angle here at this top section and this bottom section. So that could be quite useful if you need to utilize that. And if you want to get rid of these, you can just X and get rid of them and head back to uh, global or local if needed. Now there is a bug that you'll sometimes come across when using the knife tool. Uh, when you make a cut, what will end up happening, although I'll probably have a hard time reproducing this, when you make these cuts like this, okay, and at some point you hit space bar, sometimes the edge will disappear or like a normal will invert. Some weird things can happen. Usually this is caused because the knife tool will create doubles, double vertices. And so if you ever see that occurring, that's more than likely what is happening. Now, this is caused by the view here under um, the end panel, right? Press in, bring out this section, hit view. The clip start here is at 0 0.01. So what's causing that is just, um, it's like an inaccuracy with numbers, basically. And so you'd want to increase the clip start to something like 0 0.1, maybe. And then I'll keep that from happening if you run into that issue. Uh, it'll be less likely to occur. I don't believe the end clipping here has any effect on it but it might, so you might want to try changing that one lower as well, possibly, uh, while using the knife tool. Now, there are a couple other features I just want to talk about real quick. So you can, of course, use K to get to the knife tool, which is what I would personally recommend. However, there is the knife tool option over here as well, and so you can actually use this. But uh, there's a couple things to think about when using this. First of all, um, you, there's occluded geometry, which we didn't really, we don't have an option for when we use K. And so let me just demo what that's about real quick. So if I made some cuts here, grab this face, Alt E, extrude manifold down. All right, when you're making a cut, going across the mesh like this, you see how it doesn't cut the middle there? That's not an error, it's just the occluded geometry. Basically, it's at an angle that um, the knife tool just kind of ignores the same on this back side here because you can't really see it all that well. But whenever you're doing these cuts, sometimes you have to keep that in mind. You might want to take these two and press J and join between them instead of trying to do a knife cut into an, to an area like that anyways. That should work out quite well for you. And another option here is only selected. So this is ac actually accessible by hitting Shift K instead of just K. Problem is that Recently, I've been having an issue with it anyways, is that when I hit Shift-K, or even if I use this knife tool and I turn this option on, um, I can't turn it back off for some reason. So every time I hit K, I have to use selected geometry. But basically, the idea is when you have selected geometry, you'll be able to hit the knife tool, cut all the way across, no problem, and you won't have any issues with it. 
um, only cutting on what you have selected as opposed to cutting all the way down in the gray areas of the mesh here. Unfortunately, that's not working well for me and I can't seem to turn it off. So I've been not using that as of late. Hopefully it's a bug that they'll fix at some point or maybe it's just something wrong with my settings, who knows. But if you run into that, just um, that's what that is as well. Okay, and other than that, we have the same options for the most part. Here's X-ray, here's angle snap measurements, uh, the degrees of which you can change when you use an angle snap. You can set this here and it should take effect when you hit K. But once again, I'm not gonna recommend that. I'm gonna get back to that in a second, but um, you can also change whether you're gonna use select box, select lasso or whatever the case here. And that's just when you hit shift and you click and drag basically. So that's what that option does there. All right, so with all that out of the way, let's talk about customizing this knife tool and its behavior um, on startup basically when you get into Blender. So if you go to edit preferences and go down to key map, you type in knife over here. And what you're looking for is mesh knife topology tool, the K key, right? And expand this. Now you can customize any tool in Blender usually um, by going to the key map of it. And you'll see there's a bunch of grayed out stuff here. So it's default behavior. If you want to change how it's going to act, you can go ahead and do that over here. Some shiz like angle snapping, perhaps. Uh, if we hit A once, it turns to screen. We hit A again, it turns to relative. So we can actually just set it to relative by default. Here's our angle increments, right? We can go ahead and change that to five degrees. Our measurements, I like to just use angle. I don't like the distance. Uh, I don't personally care for x-ray, so I'm gonna turn that off. And you can, of course, you know, change any of the settings here that you want, and then save your preferences. And you'll be good to go there. So next time you're making some cuts, all those settings will be active by default. So when you press K, you'll see we instantly have angle snap on. Okay, something I want to mention about angle snap real quick, that I kind of forgot to mention, is going to be this little setup here. Let's just cut somewhere for now. When you cut from an edge, you'll notice it highlights that edge, right? When you cut from a vertex though, it's gonna highlight one edge or the other. If you hit R, you can swap which one you're gonna use, okay? So if we had a more complicated looking mesh here, perhaps like it went out this way, and we wanna go out in this direction. Okay, you can see we can snap and we can hit R. It should be able to hit R, here we go. So yeah, we can hit R and go between all three of those basically. So if we need that 90 degree, there we go. Okay. Just like that, done. And if you ever wanna get back to some of your default settings there, like you don't want angle snap on, now it's just, you just simply hit A and it'll turn it off. Whereas before you'd have to hit A twice to turn it on, which could be a little bit problematic, but sometimes you wanna use angle snap as well with cut through. So you'll hit K, C, then uh, possibly have to hit A twice now to do a cut through like this and get a perfectly flat line, uh, which could be useful. All right, so basically, once you understand how to use a knife tool, it's really easy to get into modeling with it. So we hold Control and Shift. We can select one edge. We'll select all of them. Ones are going around here in a ring. We do a bevel and chamfer it. And so now we can go ahead and combo this up with some other tools such as selecting an edge, you can right click this and you can subdivide this edge. Some of you guys coming from Maya will understand that the Maya cut over there, multi edit or whatever it was, um, you can do 25, 50 and 75% cuts, right? You can't really do that here in Blender, unfortunately. So you need to change the number of cuts when you subdivide this edge. If you want 33 and a 66%, you would use two segments. Um, otherwise use three and now you'll have your 25, 50 and 75 there. So you can use those as needed and you'll be able to cut out from them like such. Now you can do a 90 degree cut out this way perhaps. Okay, no problem. When you have these extra vertices left over, uh, you could just select them and hit Control X to do a, a quick dissolve there or a um, dissolve selection, should I say. However, if you have the machine tools add on, you can use its cleanup feature to just quickly get rid of them as well. Usually that works, sometimes it won't. You still have to do it manually, but. Overall, it's not gonna be too bad of an experience there. So we can make all these cuts going around here. No problem, really. And um, do what we gotta do here now, right? 
So here's a fun one. I'm going to AX limit dissolve. If you want to use a bunch of planner faces, you can limit dissolve 0.05, get rid of any excess. So now I could just scale this in here, perhaps make sure I'm using global medium point. Uh, when you have two edges like this, you can right click and subdivide these as well. And you'll see it just pretty much bisects them with the number of cuts here. So it's kind of a fun one to utilize as well if you want to put that to work. All right. So now we can just go through. Uh, if you make some cuts, where you overextend them basically from one to the other. It tends to work out a little bit easier this way to make these kinds of cuts like this. Okay. Because you might just take something like this, extrude it up later, and press AX, limit dissolve. You'll see you got rid of all those ones in the middle there, but this little segment over here, it's not too bad now. I don't really care for that edge shooting all the way across, but I uh, can't dissolve it right now, so if I join over here, perhaps, and join over here, I should be able to dissolve these two now. Not a big deal. So you can Alt-Shift-Select these, Control-B and Bevel, and mouse will up as needed. And use maybe uh, eight segments there, perhaps. AX, Limit Dissolve again. And you'll see it kind of shifts those edges around every time you Limit Dissolve, so you got to be careful with that one a little bit. But um, definitely you're capable of now modifying your mesh however you see fit. And making those kinds of adjustments, perhaps you have to come back through here later on and just simply control E, subdivide that edge. You go ahead and do that. And now we're going to get into using a feature that comes with the Machine Tools Deus Ex version. So, a lot of you guys know um, there's an add on called Punch It, but if you didn't know this, it comes with the Machine Tools Deus Ex version, which is a paid version of Machine Tools, right? So I could do something like a 45 degree cut here, go out this way, we can go back this way and do maybe another 45. Okay, hit space bar, done. And if you were to try to do something like extrude manifold here, you'll see it just digs into the mesh. It doesn't really do all that, anything special. Um, however, Machine Tools Deus Ex version, if you hit Alt E, you can do a punch it. And now you can hold Control, line it to this edge over here, send it through the mesh. You might have to hit W, Okay, and that's going to do a push and pull by one. And usually that works out just fine. And what you can do is you can just click now and you'll make a cut like so. So the knife tool becomes a little bit more useful with um, a feature like that. Whereas if you were to try to use extrude manifold, you can't go all the way through the mesh like that. It just wouldn't work out either. And so we can come through here, perhaps maybe make some knife cuts in this area. Try to get it to snap where I want it. Okay, we take these two edges, we can subdivide these perhaps. You can see where this is going. We can take these edges, we can bevel them, or chamfer them, should I say. We have these set up like this. Now, extrude manifold actually works really well here on these ones, whereas uh, punch it, you can only do one selection at a time, one face. So it does have some limitations, but uh, we can dissolve all this. And there we go, we have something like that going now. So we can make more modifications to it perhaps. And have a little bit of fun with it. All right. Okay, it auto smooth. All right. If we want to add a bevel modifier later on, as long as we got good mesh, we can do that. And then add a weighted normal using hard ops here for this. So, bevel modifier, just change the outer emitter to arc. Um, and that's really all you have to do, but it'd be preferable to use an even amount of segments. So, like four. And you can see over here, it's having a little bit of an issue with this section. So it does turn clamp overlap off when you're using hard ops. So just keep that in mind. It could cause a little bit of a problem there. I like to turn these off in edit mode, at least the bevels. Press A and merge by distance, perhaps. I'm going to go through this area. Just press I and then I, inset again. Hit inset again and hold control. Do this number. When I X limit dissolve everything, when I limit dissolve, you'll see it gets rid of a number of these edges. But it still may not bevel perfectly in here, but it might. And that's something you may or may not want to do is dissolve all that in there. You might want to work that a little bit nicer, perhaps. But uh, clamp overlap is off. So if you turn it on and it gets smaller, it means there's um, edges are running into each other, basically, and overlapping each other, right? So that's, that's what's going on there. Uh, in this case, we're doing okay with it, though. I'll do a chamfer over here. Uh, bevel. 
those two chamfers or the two edges of the chamfer, should I say? Not a big deal. And so, yeah, this can be quite good. When you're doing these different kinds of cuts like this, you can see the angle snap only works up to an edge, and then you gotta continue from it, unfortunately. If you went past that edge, that would be great, but it doesn't do that. And also, sometimes it can be hard to work in those areas if you're not zoomed in far enough. I'll space bar that for a sec. If you extrude manifold this, you'll see it pushes in like so, not exactly what we want. And so let me do punch it real quick. There might be a way to actually make extrude manifold behave the way you want it to. But I'd rather just use punch it personally. Anyway, so I push this in right here. Every time you run punch it, you need to do a clean up after. And it's going to merge excess and get rid of some nonsense it doesn't need. So that should work out pretty well. You do limit dissolves where you want as well. It's good to do local limit dissolves instead of trying to do the whole mesh. But uh, yeah, you can go through this whole process and make all the destructive edits you want. Not a big deal. Get some really nice looking stuff going on by the end of it for sure. So put the tool to use. The knife tool is kind of one of your standards there that you should definitely learn how to utilize. You can see some of the limitations you get here when it comes to using the bevel modifier. That might be one you want to manually do later on, perhaps. So it's definitely not going all the way through that area. So let me just select all that. You see something's going on over here. It didn't select that. A lot of times that's an indication there's a double in that area. But in this case, I think it just needs to be selected manually. You see the clipping distance becomes a little bit of a problem, though. But if you want to increase it, you definitely can if you might have a little bit of a struggle with the knife tool, but sometimes you just gotta see things up close. And that's just the way it is. So um, maybe try like 0 0.05 instead. All right. So we can go around the whole shape and make all these different little edits and changes until we're happy. If you have little weird shading issues like this, by the way, you see how it kind of has like a little weird edge here. Um, it could be a piece of meshed up or meshed up messed up geometry. However, that's not always the case. Blender does have issues with bevels when it comes to the shading. No matter what you do, it's always going to have some kind of um, setup like this when you're using a bevel profile of um, 0.5, which is what I did when I did this manually was use a 0.5 instead of a 0.7. What 0.7 does? Some of you guys were asking about this. I've talked about it in previous videos. I shade auto smooth, increase the angle here a little bit. Um, what it's trying to do at least is it this top edge here is going to be a little bit flatter in that area when you use 0.7. So the, the corner becomes a little bit sharper. It tends to look a little bit nicer usually, but even then it still technically still has that problem in there with the uh, the bevels. You can also try checking loop slide on and off if you want to see if you can get a different, a little bit of a different result out of some areas, but you'll more than likely have to, you know, apply the bevel at some point and do things manually or, um, you know, check your mesh, just go over it and see, you know, how it's looking with the bevel modifier. And then uh, if it's not looking right, you might just have to manually do things. But this is where having something like a um, mesh machine could be really useful. Because if you do a bevel with mesh machine, right, you could do a regular bevel first if you want, but you want to change this later on. You can use mesh machine if you have the add-on. You can unbevel things, which is always nice. You can press S to turn the sharp off if you want, or you can try doing a refuse. And you can see there we're going to have a little bit of a different bevel here now. We can hit W, change the size of it, mouse wheel up and down, all that fun stuff while doing. Um, a new bevel basically so it does change the profile a little bit though here you can see the tension you want to try changing it with something like 0.5 then we'll get a more um, more similar roundness to this as the other one over there so that's something else you want to pay attention to but that's why hard ops uses 0.7 and obviously mesh machine uses 0.7 too it just creates a better looking uh, edge generally speaking or uh, bevel should i say Anyways, that's it for this video. Just want to kind of go over this real quick so you can 
uh, see how you can utilize it. But now, you know, if you change those settings and preferences, every time you load it up, you'll always have those same settings. Okay. So you'll certainly be able to use those if needed. If you ever get stuck with the midpoint, by the way, you just hold, you know, hit shift a couple of times. It'll probably go away. But you can see we can knock out some things here quite easily now. That otherwise would seem kind of challenging to get them just right. Anyways, so that's why I made this video so you guys would have a better understanding how to use the tool. And hopefully it helps you out. All right. Check you out in the next video. Take care.